everyone. It's another edition of This Ain't No Game. Uh, this week's movie is Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Now, this is a bit of an anomaly as far as movies based on video games go because most of the time when you're making a movie that's based on a video game, you're trying to like reinterpret the source material into something that works better as a film. Advent Children actually plays a lot more like just a straight up sequel to Final Fantasy VII, the uh, you know, 1997 original PlayStation Smash RPG hit from Square. So as such, it pretty much feels like pure, unadulterated, hardcore fan service. Basically every single shot in this movie has something that references back to Final Fantasy VII. The story itself ostensibly is about this thing called Geostigma, which uh, has something to do with Genova infecting the life stream. And then there's this guy called Kadaj, who's like kind of a Sephiroth stand-in, who's being all malevolent towards uh, Cloud Strife and Tifa and all the rest of the gang. But again, all of that story stuff is really just a kind of a, a weak ass pretense to say, hey, remember this guy? Remember this guy? Remember the dog? Remember the black guy? They're all there again, but they look way better because it's all like nine years later, super high res CG. Now the movie basically has two speeds. You either get like your weird abstract melodramatic dialogue scene, where everyone's being super mopey and philosophical, or you get crazy hardcore, over-the-top, hyper-anime style action sequences. <laughs> the first time you see one of those, it's kind of cool. There's like a, a little motorbike fight early on between Cloud and uh, this fake Sephiroth and his gang. And it's like, all right, that's pretty cool. And then you get you know a little dialogue, a little kind of plot development stuff. And then you get this cool fight between Tifa and another one of the blondy, silver-haired gang. And like, that's really cool. Like that, I actually really enjoy that fight a whole lot. But then it just alternates back and forth like that over and over again. Everyone's waiting. Uh, until basically the last 40 minutes of this movie are like three or four action scenes just strung together. You know, it's all shot really well. Like the camera movement's really great. They, they have a real love of like, the speed up, slow down, like it's going super fast and then you get into a little slow motion and then a dude gets punched in the face and it speeds back up again and guys are flying in the air. It's all very supernatural in movement. But after a while, it kind of starts to wear on you. Uh, honestly, the, the best scene in the whole movie is this one right here. This is where the whole original Final Fantasy VII posse is fighting against Bahamut. He gets summoned. There's a summon in this movie, for God's sakes. Come on. So that part is awesome. I, I mean, I, when I watched that, I'm not even that big of a Final Fantasy VII fan, but seeing that part where he's getting chucked up and then another guy's flying up and somehow defying the laws of physics to throw him up even further and he's flying through the air and there's a huge blue fireball, all that stuff is really neat. But after that, there's like another 30 minutes of more just over the top, constant breakneck action. I mean, spoiler warning, Sephiroth shows back up at a point and it's Cloud versus Sephiroth. I think that really kind of sums up how fan service -y Advent Children really is. It doesn't matter, like the story that they kind of try setting up at the beginning, they don't care by the end. It's like, oh look, here's Eris. She's dead already, who cares? Here she is. Sephiroth, he's dead, who cares? Bring him back. Because that's really all you want, right? Final Fantasy VII fans, that's, that's what you're here for? Well, you got it. Advent Children hooks you up. The bad part, unfortunately, is that if you aren't a Final Fantasy VII fan, uh, much of the story is, is incomprehensible. Uh -huh. 
there's definitely a lot of references to stuff that happened in, in FF7. Genova was a calamity that fell from the sky a long, long time ago and tried to destroy the planet. Anyway. That if you're not already very intimately familiar with, uh, it, it's going to be kind of an impenetrable story for you. But again, last 40 minutes are pure action, so that doesn't really matter. If nothing else, it's flashy. Did I mention that Sephiroth's in it? Sephiroth's in it! How is that even possible? He's got his big, long, crazy sword. Which, like, that looked cool in a cutscene in 1997, but uh, it looks more than a little bit preposterous in this movie with its... <laughs> Whatever, this whole movie is so preposterous. It really does. It's, it works fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh-huh. So yeah, bottom line, uh, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children is flashy, crazy, over-the-top, ton of great action. Uh, it, it definitely wears on you after a while. Uh, but it's ultimately, I think, really only uh, appreciable by FF7 fans. If you've got a love for that source material, you just kind of get it's 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 like a high school reunion for those characters uh, and in that regard it's very successful my reunion that you're dying to watch so that's going to do it for this week's edition of this ain't no game as always i'm ryan davis and until next week ha ha da ba da ba, -da -ba.